once heard that diversification is an established tenet of conservative investment, and I speak on Forex ban for importation of foods and fertilizer, it's a season of endurance. In its quest to diversify the economy and boost the agri sector, the president directed the Central Bank of Nigeria to stop allocation of forex for importation of food and fertilizer into the country. This policy, however, has elicited, elicited reactions from various quarters, including the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, who warned that the policy could cause further inflation as the country was not yet sufficient in food production. Nigeria is struggling to close a trade gap which widened to a record 1.8 trillion naira in the three months through June. This is after the global crash in the price of oil, the country's main export. This dropped 47% in the wake of Corona pandemic, which sapped the demand for the commodity. The, con con the continuous forex inflow dried up due to the oil price plunge, increasing pressure on dollar reserves and forcing the central bank to devalue the Naira twice this year. Nigerians were still grappling with the recent hike in electricity tariff and pump price of PMS, that's the premium motor spirit, which heralded an impending winter of discontent in the polity in light of the international effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. By preventing the impact of what some already consider phantom palliatives to sufficiently relieve the population, the administration is inadvertently inviting industrial unrest but tending great danger for an economy virtually reverting to recession. While I agree that certain necessary measures needed to be taken, like the subsidy removal, the timing couldn't have come at a worse time considering the hardship that Nigerians have had to endure throughout the pandemic. Government will have to be sensitive to the needs and welfare of its citizens and provide palliatives that will make impact and not 2,000 bosses for a population of over 200 million. <laughs> I like the finish. 2,000 bosses for 200 million people. In London alone, how many buses do you have on the, on, on the road? I, I, I think um, the, the, the uh, policy on foreign directed allocation to certain imports, um, it, it, it's not, what was not a particularly well thought through policy. And that was why you, we saw policy somersault within a couple of weeks of the initial pronouncement. So the first pronouncement was, okay, don't give uh, FX to people to buy one of the products was maize. I remember maize. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of weeks after, we said, OK, you can give five, some five foreign five. exchange, but it will be to four importers who will import on behalf of the other because they have the capacity. The problem I see right there is that we make policy pronouncement without first thinking through the import of those policies. And then after we roll out the policy, uh, the, the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria and the Millers went to make it, it, cases with uh, some, some people and, and the president. And then we reversed that policy. Why didn't we think through before we rolled out the policy? And it is the same with the whole lot of what we are doing as a country in terms, in terms of policy. We need, we need to harmonize our policy. Yeah. Yes, I, I think that... Um we are not very proactive in our approach to investment and then um, national income and all the ancillary issues around it. I, I have lived for four decades in this country. I have never known anything about good governance, <laughs> whether it is in the financial sector or in the economy or in any other direction. I think that uh, on this issue, the government will need to do more. The CBN should understudy the structure and idiosyncrasy of financial management and how we respond to it. There's a report they released some time ago that uh, Nigerians, most Nigerians have less than 500,000 around their accounts and all that. Oh. And then when you look at export, import, forest management, and the fact that we are not even a producing nation, the conflicts are much. What exactly can we put together to cushion the effects through policy 
of the sufferings of Nigerians and how can we use our financial expertise to uh, make sure that people are able to get the dividend of democracy, plan financially well, and then execute projects and have a worthwhile experience in this country. Uh, I like what you just said about a study saying that many Nigerians have just about 5,000 Naira in their accounts. Mm -hmm. Of course, and that's why I think it's perpetuating poverty when you then do trader money and say you're giving um, traders 10,000 Naira to boost their trade. Like, <laughs> are you for real? <laughs> are, do you even know the realities of what obtains in the markets? What can you buy with 10,000 Naira? How do we, what kind of injection is that into anybody's business? And this idea of policy up today, policy down tomorrow, we're going back and forth, two steps forward, several steps backward. It's not taking us anywhere. Yeah, but, but really, uh, um, Sedu, I want to ask them um, some critical questions. Eh? Please. The border closure, mm -hmm. has it improved our local production? Of rice. Mm. Of rice. Of rice. Or it has even increased the price of it, the locally produced one because like demand, forces of demand and supply, it is even not enough. And what are we doing to ensure that when we, like you once asked on this platform, mm -hmm. to ensure that once we finally open the border, Yes. All of those reasons why we closed the border Nothing. would have been taken care of. Nothing. And so, sometimes I don't just want to complain. I want to still find those areas I can say, oh, the government is doing so well. But you look at how do you introduce a policy. Midway, you now realize, oh, no, we need to modify it. I had expected that you sit down, you think the policy through, you know, like, even before you, like, manufacturers... Um, um, website builders, they look for hackers and say, look, hack into this my, my website so that I'll be able to create firewalls. I will be able to know, you know, the vulnerability. That's right. We won't do it. Somebody manufactures a car, he gets drivers that will drive them roughly. So he knows the balance. Yeah. We won't do it. Pressure. It is when we, after we have introduced that policy, maybe Sedu is um, Sedu's friend. He's the president tomorrow. I just go to him and said, ah, you know, we can do this, do this. He said, hey, let, let's go ahead. Mm -hmm. He calls the chief of staff. And then it is after the introduction, you now see all the uh, mm -hmm. stakeholders will be complaining. I say, oh, no, 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 no. Let's go back. Right. I, I, I think we should be, for me, the responsibility is on all of us. If we create excuses for ineptitude, we're going to consistently have, you know, this kind of policy somersaults. You know, I wanted to write something that will celebrate Nigeria on this uh, particular edition. I found it so hard because if I look this way, there are <laughs> issues. <laughs> you I write about this way. railway. Ah, railway. Uh, that's Did what they are celebrating now. So mm. maybe. When there was a collision this week with uh, a train no, and a car. I think, I think but that, at least that there is there. Is, is there. Success is, is there. Their successes in those areas. Well, in, in Abuja, yeah. I like that one that takes you from the airport to Kaduna. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's Except that the trains are also locomotive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to start there from somewhere. <laughs> and then recently, Amrobas attacked some. Uh, and, so. yes. and a helicopter have to escort some too. So <laughs> we'll get there. At least so they were escorted <laughs> the helicopter. We're doing well. We're doing well. Like, like we say, oin. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you sharing your opinion with us. Omolayo Oshodi is angered by Liberal's last advocacy, old news as he says. You have spoken. The people who claim to be governing us are our problem in this country. Most of them are not knowledgeable enough to know what governance entails and what governance is all about. All they think about is to loot any available funds in the treasury. My dear Nasuwi Siamu, whereas Otumba Olami Lekon Samuel also says, Lai Lai government, this is the worst government in the history of our nation. Hmm. Also, Silv V says, great job on all our advocacies. Thank you, Omalayo Oshodi. Otumba Olami Lekon Samuel and Silv V, we appreciate your participation with us on our conversations. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate 
Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Evans goes down on our religious doctrines.